Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Um, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I think if you want to sell a solution, it's good if there is a problem that needs to be solved. <laughs> Otherwise, your product probably will not sell. And um, in retrospect, I think this may have been a little bit the problem of the Swiss Vollgeld Initiative. Because in the public perception, at least, I think, people probably did not perceive the Swiss franc to be a problem. So that was the bad news. The good news is, for you, as um, people who want to sell a product, namely a monetary solution, the good news is that I think the euro will be soon in need of such a solution. The question that I'm discussing here is, how can the euro survive? And my answer is, probably only through monetary reform. Otherwise, it will fall apart. So what is the problem? Let's start with that. The problem is not what many people think, that there are crazy governments in some of the countries who do irrational things. No, I think the problem is that the promise made at the beginning of EMU that all the countries that joined the monetary union will adapt to the single currency, this promise has not worked. And I pick here um, an important country that is for EMU, that what, what is commonly called the elephant in the room, Italy. As you can see from this chart, and I will try to be now a little bit fast so that we come after having identified the problem to the solution. What you can see from this chart is that Italy has not grown. Industrial production is a disaster. What you can see here is that Italy has not managed over um, many, many years to keep costs under control. Therefore, prices have risen more than elsewhere, which means that the country has lost competitiveness. When you lose competitiveness and you do not grow, very hard to keep your government finances under control. This is not because they have been, uh, they have been uh, crazy spenders. Italy had most of the time a primary surplus, budget surplus before interest payments. But if you do not grow, no way that you can actually keep your financial accounts um, in line. Your uh, debt gets out of hand. And eventually, people get so dissatisfied that they say, we can't go on longer than this. So you get here a big boost to what is commonly called populist parties. As you can see here, the Cinque Stelle and the Lega have altogether about 60% support in the polls. So this is mainstream. This is not um, uh, populist um, border uh, politics that we have here. The, the difference, the way that I see it, between the populists, so-called populists, the 60% uh, parties here, and the rest is that they say what the fact is. And the previous um, the previous parties, the previous governments, have had a deal with Brussels where they have pretended to do what is needed, and Brussels has pretended that they are indeed doing what is needed. With these guys, it's over. They simply say, it does not work. So this is the problem. Well, problems can drag on for a long time, but at some point, they might actually um, really blow up. So is there um, the possibility that the euro could blow up and that we need um, a solution for the situation? I think there is. Um, monetary union is a fairy tale. I mean, the people here in this room will probably understand it, but the uh, general public has not understood that we are basically only in a cash union. Why are we only in a cash union? Well, simply because, as I guess all of you here in this room understand, that bank deposits are private liabilities of banks to their customers, created through credit extension. And therefore, in the euro area, a deposit 
in country A is something different from a deposit in country B. Because the credits that have create, been created in country A have a different quality, often, than in country B. So in that uh, sense, to come back to the Italian problem, a deposit in Italy is com something completely different from a deposit in Germany. Because the credit quality of Italian banks is different, and the ability of the government to back the banks is also different. So the only union that we have is basically a union of banknotes. That's it. No more than that. Um, that we have only a union of banknotes and not a monetary union can be seen now um, in the stress periods that we have observed during the euro crisis and more recently. These are the famous target balances. And you can see that when the interbank market breaks down, so when a, a deposit moves, let's say, from Italy to Germany, and the German banks do not lend back to the Italian banks, what you then have is a, um, the, the money is routed through the euro system, through the system of European central banks. And as it is routed through the euro system, the um, movement of deposits creates um, claims and liabilities in the interbank target system that is run by the central bank. And you can see this um, here that over time the Italian um, central bank has built up a substantial amount of liabilities towards the euro system, presently um, 468 billion euros, whereas the um, Bundesbank has built up substantial claims against the euro system, presently about 900 billion euros. This tells you that um, deposits have been moved, have moved from Italy to Germany or investors chose to exchange Italian bonds against German deposits and not Italian deposits. Um, and because of this unequal treatment of the deposits, the euro system has acted in a way as a stabilizing factor and held the euro together so far. You can this, uh, see this again here just to illustrate that these target imbalances reflect different risk assessments of the um, situation in one country and another. This is simply, again, the change in the target balances plotted here with the um, interest rate differentials, 10-year government bonds, Germany and Italy here, where the scale of interest rate differentials here and inverted. So when this red line goes down, the spreads of Italian, bank, uh, Italian bonds versus German bonds goes up. And you can see here how the increased perceived risk in Italy has led here to a widening of the Italian target deficit. Then we had, as Mr. Draghi said he would do, or the ECB would do whatever it takes to stabilize the euro, risk retreated, the target balance is improved. And then with QE, quantitative easing, which allowed international investors to exchange Italian government bonds against German deposits, and the Bundesbank then acts basically as the risk intermediary, the target balances went um, into deficit again. And more recently, the conflict between the Italian government and Brussels has inc again increased the um, spread and has increased the target deficit. How can um, the euro be broken? Most of the economists would say it can't. Um, this system will always work. And if these imbalances go to infinite, it doesn't matter. It cannot be broken. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Why not? Um, let me show you what happens when um, Italian residents move their deposits out of the country. We have here an Italian banking system that has um, 110 uh, deposits, E, and they have been created through credit on the left-hand side, and they have managed to hold about 10 units in reserves at the Banca d'Italia. Now let's assume that the Italians, Italian bank customer moves 10 units of his 
deposits, his or her deposits, elsewhere, let's say to Germany. In that case, the balance sheet looks like that. Because the Germans, in times of stress, do not um, rechannel the deposits that have gone away, so in the bank lending, the um, Italian bank needs to transfer the 10 units of reserve units to the euro system, and the euro system then allocates it to um, the Germans in order to be able to move these 10 units. Otherwise, they won't move. Now comes the next customer. He says, I want to um, take another 10 out of this. So the Italian bank banking system needs another 10 units of reserves. How can they do it? Well, they will take part of the credits, sell them under reverse transaction to the ECB, and get 10 units. And the money disappears. Comes the next customer. They will do it again. And the next customer will do it again. Basically, when you get a bank run in Italy, that people will say, I take my money out. The credit of the banking system moves basically onto the balance sheet of the Banca d'Italia. The Banca d'Italia has then all, this is the theoretical case, the borderline solution. The Banca d'Italia has all the credits that the Italian banking system has extended in the case of a bank run that is uncontrolled. On the liability side, they have then the equivalent liabilities towards the euro system in the target system, in the bank payment system. On the other side, on the German side, let's assume, the deposits are now sitting in a German bank or in the German banking system. So the German banking system has now liabilities towards Italian customers. The German banking system backs these liabilities with claims on the euro system, meaning on the Bundesbank. And the Bundesbank has claims on the euro system to back its liabilities towards the German banking system. So we basically end up, if we go through the euro system, with the Bundesbank having claims on the Banca d'Italia, which owns all the credits in Italy, and the Italians have claims on the Bundesbank. So the Bundesbank becomes the big, big risk exchange machine if there is a bank run in Italy. Now, will it be come to that border solution? I would argue probably not. Um, there will be at some stage a um, panic in the governing council of the ECB where probably they will get the two-thirds majority that the process of shifting um, Italian bank credit onto the balance sheet of the Banca d'Italia, the so-called emerging lending um, assistance, will be stopped because they do not want to have this corner solution. However, when the process is stopped, basically deposits can no longer be moved. That's it. Then you have the first crack of the euro. The second crack comes then, basically when people realize I cannot move my money anymore out of the country, I go to my cash machine and take it out. And I put it in a suitcase and I drive over to Munich or whatever. So the next step will be that the um, cash machines are closed and the borders will be checked. And then Italy is de facto, de facto out of the euro. So what I'm telling you here is that the euro can no longer or cannot be broken um, by hedge funds as the European monetary system can be broken, was broken. European uh, exchange rate mechanism in the early 90s, but it can be broken now by a bank run in Italy when people lose their confidence. So far, so far so good. You see here it started. This is the change in bank deposits in Italy. And you can see that as they came down during the euro crisis, target balances went down and then whatever it takes stopped it. Here you can see the stress comes up but the Italian customers still keep the faith. So the euro is dangling at the little thread of the faith that Italian bank customers have in their 
banks. So that's why I'm telling you there may be a problem that requires a solution. So let's go on. And I would skip that because I have little time. Bottom line is, ADIS, European Common Deposit Insurance, will not work to solve this problem. Because ADIS, when you look at what it would imply for um, costs of um, states to fund themselves through the banking system, they will, will be too high. They can't, they can't do it anymore. So let me skip this and go over to the solution for which I have five minutes left. Um, the safe deposit. Now, think of a safe deposit as a deposit fully backed with bank reserves. Um, think of uh, credit money as private bank money. And you have discussed this, I've heard already um, quite extensively, so that I can probably be very brief on that. Um, we would then have two types of money. We would have a safe deposit and we have, would have private bank money. And I think it was Josef Huber who said, initially you can keep it at parity, but when, let's say, you have a real bank run, you make simply the exchange rate between credit money and the safe deposit variable. Then you can ensure that your safe deposit does not get blown out of bounds. So in that sense, you start out with money competition between the safe deposits and the credit money deposits, the bank deposits. Um, people say, well, this is science fiction. No, we are on our way. We are on our way in the sense that in order to create the safe deposit, um, this banking system needs the reserves to back the deposit. Um, the ECB can supply these reserves if they keep buying assets. We have about 7 billion um, side deposits that we need to cover when we go from the present situation. And the ECB has already acquired about 2.6 trillion in assets, created excess reserves in the process. So here comes the thing. If the ECB keeps buying assets, primarily government bonds, up to 7 billion, they can create a safe deposit. And I think this is actually a, um, I should say, a way to um, create a grand bargain, or I would say a new deal for the euro. As you probably all know, um, this was all spelled out in the Chicago plan. And when we go through the steps of the Chicago plan, we have the basis of the grand bargain. Um, government debt presently is 9.37 trillion euros. Um, side deposits are 7 trillion euros. We need that. In order to back these side deposits, the ECB can take the um, government debt in this amount on its balance sheet. This means that we can reduce the remaining government debt in the market um, to about 2.7 trillion or 25% of GDP. It's a great bargain, so to speak. What we can have here is a solution in which we say here um, we can get rid of the government debt and we create a safe deposit. However, um, let me go over this. Um, this is, uh, when you go through, this is basically all the cryptocurrency stories, which I cannot go into it. Um, what we can do is basically um, create, after this great bargain, we can um, create a world in which a new um, inflation of government debt is not possible by having the new euro um, set up through the uh, safe deposit competing with other monies. Um, let me just go through as I have not enough time. All the other solutions that have been discussed, um, liarization, I mean, uh, tilting ECB policy towards, completely towards Italy, or hardening the euro, or transfer union, 
will all lead in the end to the dissolution of the euro. So in, that's the only really, I think, um, solution for the euro is to strike this bargain, to say that um, the southern countries are allowed to entirely monetize their debt, or not entirely, monetize a large part of the debt on the ECB's balance sheet. In return, the so-called hard currency countries, or the Northern Alliance, or whatever you call it, who are afraid that there will be always monetization of government debt, are allowed to introduce le legislation to have um, digital, public, and private currencies to compete with the new euro. Currency competition as a means in order to avoid that after this one-off debt reduction, there are new, um, uh, new mechanisms created where this uh, debt accumulation will continue. That would be, in my view, um, the solution to this um, problem. So, um, monetary reform in the euro area in order to um, keep the euro and avoid that it breaks apart in national parts, which has not only economic, not only monetary, but very serious political ramifications all over Europe. Now, um, we have here a solution. There is a problem, but this doesn't mean that the politicians will actually act accordingly. Politicians are oriented towards the status quo. You will never ever get, so this is a strong statement, but I, do, I say this with conviction, you will never ever get a politician doing something in anticipation of a problem. You need to have the problem and then they will do something. Let's assume that this is generally valid. Um, but my argument is there is a significant probability of a crisis coming up, created by a bank run in Italy, that will um, create the proverbial um, weekend over which you have to come to a solution. And the issue is that when they're closed up on a Friday evening, and they will have to come up with a solution, when in Sydney the uh, exchange is open, they need to have a thought out plan. And I think this is basically where we come in. Um, we, should have, we should have something we can take off the shelf and say, look, you have so and so many hours now to solve it. We have thought this through. Here is a solution. Now, as you know, some people will say that um, all this is science fiction, but science fiction can sometimes happen much faster than you think. And what I've put up here is not from a great philosopher, it's just a line from Jerry Lewis. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Very interesting. Uh, so we do have some do we have time for Q&A. Please keep it short. Thank you for your solution. Part of your solution is that uh, the ECB continues and even increases asset purchases. Yes. It, uh, it, it purchases these assets on interest-bearing credits. So what will happen when inflation sets in and now the interest rate is zero, but when interest rates become 8% and the central bank has to pay interest on those credits extended okay. to the banks? You understand? Basically what I'm saying is, that the ECB should buy up all these government bonds and um, annul it. Gone. It's finito. Over. Yeah. And these reserves are interest bearing. No, you put us, okay, you put them at zero. You shouldn't uh, um, have the banks hold uh, the. Um, uh, reserves that they need to back the safe deposit on the present window with minus 0.4%. That would be that would be crazy. No, it comes into a reserve window where the interest rate is simply zero. You, the uh, payment on these outs, on, on these uh, bonds that the ECB has on its balance sheet can actually 
um, be ignored because what happens is the government is paying this uh, interest to the central bank, which the central bank pays out again as senior to the government. Also, when the bonds mature, the central bank has to buy new bonds in order to continue to back the safe deposit. So what we're basically saying is, like in the Chicago plan, we move the government debt on the balance sheet and we can keep it there permanently at zero interest. Similarly, the, we put the reserves that are needed to back the safe deposit into a reserve account at the ECB at zero interest. And then, in this situation where you have a um, Vollgeld Euro, I would say, as a Hayekian, let's make sure that they don't get um, imaginative again and to create another bubble and so therefore let's introduce currency competition and we are on our way that was basically my chart with digital money and I think politically you could make this great bargain by saying to the countries that are presently aching under debt look we actually allow you now to monetize monetize and in return you agree that we establish legisla legislation that allows uh, digital currency um, exchanges, that make sure that um, um, asset-backed digital currencies can be traded legally, soundly. So we agree to monetization, you agree that we can uh, uh, create the proper legislation for digital currencies, and with digital currencies, I mean private cryptocurrencies. Big pressure. Um, my name is Stan Jordan. I work for Positive Money Europe. So we are an NGO based in Brussels and I really appreciate your talk because this is ex exactly what we're trying to do as well, like trying to lay the ground for such solution to be possible at some point. So thanks for that. My question is basically picking up on what you were saying at the end. So basically the deal is Germany forgets about monetary financing prohibition and yes. and so, yeah. They allow it. But what, I mean, I kind of like it in a way, but as a French, I've, I've always been told that would never happen. Uh, so what makes you confident that Germany con would make such a, such a concession, yeah. uh, as opposed to the plans with TransferUnion, which you dismiss? But I think I'm less sure than you that all the scenarios are... Um, so how would it come that Germany would agree with that, seriously? The bank run in Italy. <laughs> when the bank run in Italy starts, they will try hard to reach a Friday. And they will know that they will have to have a solution by our time Sunday night. Otherwise, ish game over. <laughs> and that will concentrate the minds even of the Germans. <laughs> and if the solution is to open on Monday with a complete collapse of European Monetary Union, with chaos in the streets, or have a plan to which you agree, which brings something for everyone, monetization of debt for the over-indebted, and freedom to um, have other currencies um, in your jurisdiction, if, they, if you choose so, then both sides have something. So the Italians, let's say, can Monday morning go to the press and say, we succeeded. Italy first. Our debt is gone. And the German chancellor can go to the press and say, we preserve the euro, and who does not like to work with the euro can in the future use other currencies. You are free. So both have something to offer. That's basically the idea. I would suggest we uh, cut it off here, uh, given the time pressure. Thank you very much. Thank you.